Hi, this is Lance, and I'm going to introduce my staff to the Google Play Store for education. And within our school district, we have our very own Play Store. The kids can't just visit it and search the entire Google Play Store. They only see the apps that we push out to them. So uh, if you are not in my school district and you do have access to this, it, it works very much the same way. And so I can make things available and I'm just going through how to actually install these items for students. So what the students will need to do is they can visit the Play Store. When they open it up, they can see any apps that have been included. Now, something that the teachers need to keep in mind that these are Android apps. And since these are Android apps, it's much more like uh, an iPad or an Android device. And so you're talking about the mobile version. So as you can see, I included things like Google Classroom Google Slides and Google Drive. The reason I included those is because they are mobile apps. And so it, it works a little differently. If you make a project, like make a video with Toontastic 3D or make a, a picture uh, using Artboard or something like that, and you wanna save that work, you actually do need this Google Drive, the mobile version, to be able to save it somewhere. It doesn't access Chrome OS the same way as when you save things when you're using Chrome OS. It essentially, we're running Android and we're running Chrome at the same time. So keep that in mind that if you want kids to actually save something, they need to have this. If you want kids to submit something to Google Classroom, they need to have the Google Classroom mobile app as well. It looks different than the web version, so keep that in mind. But in order for them to turn those items in, it will access the mobile version. You have to have it downloaded. So let's talk about downloading. Some of these things I have already downloaded, like Epic, you can see I have the symbol there. It shows that I have it downloaded. If I wanna download something new, uh, for example, I'll go ahead and just do this Artboard Creative. When you enter an app that you want to install, you can just tap on the app and tap on Install, and it'll go through the downloading process. I'll give it a moment or two to do that. Okay, once you install it, then it may pop up in your apps down here like so. Uh, you can also access it through the Google Play Store. You'll see that there's an open button. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways if you were to start from scratch, how to open this app. So number one, you can use your launcher button, the circle on the bottom left corner, because it now becomes part of your apps. As you can see, it's here in my most recent, but if I go to all apps and I go to my last page, it's there as well. So I can still open it there. If I wanted to pin this, if this is going to be something that I use a lot. Like I'll probably use this fridge magnet app quite a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a hold of this guy. I'm going to drag him down to my shelf here. So that way I can get to him faster. Um, and so teachers, if you want students to access an app super fast, and it's going to be one that they use often, you can have them grab a hold of that app and drag it directly down into your shelf. So that way they can get to it faster. Okay. If, that's not an issue and you just want them to visit it. They can use that launcher. They can also use the Google Play button if you're wanting some separation and you can open it from here. Another option is to press on your pancake stack on the top left and choose My School Apps and it'll show any of them that are installed in a nice convenient list and they can be opened from here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this artboard. I've never actually used this app so this is gonna be the first time that I'm actually opening it. I'm gonna press on Open and it says it needs to access my photos and media. And I have no idea if this app is actually going to work. You can see also that it starts out small, but you can go full screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and go full screen. And some apps do crash a little bit when you go full screen. This is all in beta. And so there's things still developing, but this one worked out just fine. So it looks like I can draw easily in this one. Looks like I can add some text. Oh, that's what that one is. Look at that. If I draw, it says life is beautiful. I wonder if there's a way I can change that. So I'm gonna, oh, that's how you change the text. So if I double tap on the T over here, then I'm able to choose the font and I can press on the side arrow there and I can type something. And when I do that now, it'll say hello over and over and over as I draw. Very cool. Anyway, when I am all done, you do have the capability to share. And like I was saying before, if you want to be able to save something, see how it says save image or their share image. I'm going to have to hit share image here and it's going to pop up with some different options. There's a more button here 
and more than likely when I hit the more button, then you will see classroom or save to drive. So in order to save projects that are done in Android, you're going to need a save point. And my school district has Google apps for education accounts. So you would need to hit the save to drive, or if you want to kids to turn it in directly to classroom, they could just hit the classroom button. I'll go ahead and hit save to drive. So that way you get a feel for it. It's going to ask what folder I want it in. Um, and I can choose which folder. I'm going to go ahead and just save this. And now this picture is saved. That's a little bit about how to use the Google Play for Schools store, how to install apps, how to access them, and how to pin them down into your shelf so that way you can access them quickly.